everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Dariush. I'm the product manager for Google's Contact Center AI. It's nice to have you all here. We have a jam-packed agenda uh, for you. Uh, I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about uh, what is Contact Center AI and what is it good for. Uh, but most of the session will be presented by, uh, by our partners. Uh, right after me, uh, Josh will take the stage. Josh is from, uh, from Mitel, and he will show you uh, how Mitel has integrated into the entire Google Contact Center AI stack and how they have used it to build a more intelligent contact center. After Josh, we will hear from Ofer. Ofer is the general manager for Chatbase. Uh, uh, Chatbase is an area 120 project uh, within, uh, within Google. Uh, Ofer is going to talk about how Chatbase, uh, complemented by Contact Center AI, can help you find call drivers, call topics, and call intents in your, in your Contact Center logs. Uh, Tracy will, uh, will take the stage after that, and Tracy uh, is going to tell you about how KPMG's Intelligent Interactions platform works with Contact Center AI to optimize your Contact Center operations. And Andrea from, uh, from Genesis will, uh, will wrap things up by showing a new slash alternate way of thinking about customer care channels, okay? So with that, let's talk a little bit about Contact Center AI. Contact Center AI is part of a larger effort at Google called Cloud AI. Uh, in Cloud AI, we categorize our efforts into three categories. Category number one is our platform, our AI platform, which enables machine learning engineers and data scientists to run their uh, machine learning, training, prediction, and analytics jobs either in the cloud using cloud machine learning engine or in a hybrid or even on-prem environment using Kubeflow. The second category is our pre-trained uh, machine learning models, co easily consumable through APIs, like our image uh, recognition object recognition models, uh, translations model, um, and natural language model. If you bring in your own labeled data, you can then customize these pre-trained APIs uh, for you, for your use cases using our AutoML technology. And I'm sure you have all seen a bunch of announcements around AutoML yesterday and today. The third category is our AI solutions. In the solutions category, we get these pre-trained APIs, built new pre-trained models and APIs, package them together in a contained solution focused on a set of very specific use cases. And Contact Center AI is one of those solutions focused on customer care and contact center uh, use cases. But how did we get there? We talked to a whole bunch of customers and a lot of partners, and they told us a lot of pain points. These pain points boil into three distinct categories. Category number one is the infamous long and deep IVR tree. Press one to go left. Press two to go sharp right. Press three to go slightly right. And I bet you none of you actually enjoys that experience. If you do, please do not raise your hand, but anyone that I've talked to doesn't enjoy that experience. But once you actually push two about seven times and three about six times, and along the way you provide your account number a couple times, and you finally get to a live agent, that agent turns around and promptly asks you, what is your account number? This information that you provide the IVR at times gets missed when the IVR transitions the call to a, to a, to a live agent. Now that you have provided your account number for the third or end time for that matter, the, the agent promptly puts you on hold, lets you listen to some uh, music, uh, while the agent on the side is frantically searching for the, uh, for the answer to your, to your question. This makes it for a very poor caller experience. I don't think any of us kind of enjoys that experience. But it also makes it very, very expensive to operate a contact center. Uh, when we talk to our customers, to our partners, we figured out that at some points in time, you know, it takes up to about 15 bucks to answer a call that actually comes to a contact center. That's a lot of money for one call. 
also the agents are being, uh, are being pushed. Uh, they need to find these answers quickly. Their desktop is a mess. Uh, they have CRM, they have contact center, they have search. Uh, that results into roughly about one out of three uh, agents uh, churning within, within 12 months of joining a contact center. It makes it very, very expensive to operate a contact center. So this is why we thought, how can we actually utilize AI to make this experience better, both for the caller and for the agent? And that's why we built contact center AI. Contact center AI has three major components in it. The first one is virtual agent. It is based on our Dialogflow enterprise product. In addition to automating the transactional and common, uh, common transactional and informational calls, uh, Dialogflow allows you to flatten the IVR tree. It allows you to replace press one for X, press two for Y with, hello, I'm an automated agent. How can I help you today? and it can continue that conversation with the caller in a natural language kind of a way. Uh, it also has the ability to raise the call directly to a, to a, human, a human agent, and it will make sure that all the context gathered during the call is actually passed from the automated agent to the, uh, to the live agent. Which brings us to the second bucket, agent assist. Uh, we built Agent Assist to make sure that the experience for the live agents gets better and more streamlined. Agent Assist, as its name implies, will assist the agent by monitoring the call, building the context around that conversation between that agent and that customer, will go to the knowledge base, fetches the right answer or the right article that has the answer in it, and surfaces it to the, to the agent. So hopefully, you will never again be put on hold uh, by an agent, hopefully. The third piece is uh, conversational topic modeling. Uh, conversational topic modeling would allow you to discover topics in your chat logs and audio logs. Not only it will tell you what topics your customers were calling you about, it will tell you which keywords they used to articulate that topic. What were the top sentences they used to talk about that topic? I'm not going to talk about topic modeling that much right now because you will hear a lot about it from, uh, from our, our partners. Uh, by the way, whatever I've mentioned so far, and I use the term caller, uh, uh, it works both for audio and phone as well as uh, text, uh, text and chat. We will manage the session between the contact center deployment and all the AIs behind the scenes. Uh, Everything is backed by a knowledge base. You can create multiple knowledge bases to back your agent assist as well as virtual agent. By the way, in this uh, uh, color-coded slide, uh, Google builds the red, partner or the customer builds the green. That's, that's what, the, what the colors mean. I'm not gonna spend too much time going through the architecture right now due to time, but if you are interested in learning more about the technical aspects of it, uh, see me after, uh, after the session or see us at the booth. Trust me, we love to geek out on this stuff. We love to tell you about it. Uh, same thing with the topic modeling. See us and then we will, uh, we will chat about that. Contact Center AI is available in Alpha exclusively through, uh, through our partners today, including our SI partners. Uh, they are all fairly familiar with our stack and can actually help you onboard, uh, onboard onto it. Uh, before I turn it over to Josh to tell us about uh, the goodness of, uh, of Mitel's uh, contact center, let me make a shameless plug uh, for another session on CCAI that we have tomorrow. In this room at 1140, we will see a lot more demos about integrations into, into contact center uh, AI. We will see some today, uh, but tomorrow we will see a lot more integrations. Uh, maybe even a couple of people calling one another in the same room. So if you want to hear feedback, to, uh, audio feedback, tomorrow is the best day. Uh, we also have sessions on speech to text and dialogue flow enterprise, which I think they have occurred already. So once you actually got your hands on the videos, I encourage you to, to check that out. And uh, please, please, please go to cloud.google.com, WAC Solutions, WAC Contact Dash Center. Uh, and obviously, I got the font uh, size wrong. Uh, please do not put that one on the, on the, uh, on the feedback. Uh, but please go there. Uh, you, will hear, uh, you will read a lot about contact center moving parts. 
Uh, but the most important part is at the bottom of the screen, you need to scroll all the way down. There's a blue button that says, I'm interested. Click on it, fill out that form, and we'll love to chat with you about it. With that, I turn it over to Josh. Well, thank you, Darius. I can't say how excited we are to be here today um, working with Google to really transform the customer experience and deliver something new, something we call the intelligent customer experience. Mitel's been in business for 45 years, and our focus is delivering seamless communications and collaborations and really helping businesses communicate more effectively. We have over 70 million end users of our technology around the world, and we're number two in contact center for total contact centers deployed globally with more than 25,000 businesses entrusting their customer experience to Mitel Solutions. You know, our expectations are changing, and I'm sure you're aware of this just as much as I am. Most of us want to self-serve today. We want to be able to do, through our app or on the website, find the information we're looking for, transact the way we want to transact, and we want that to be able to work on our time, on our schedule, and from our device. And as a matter of fact, Synthetix has identified that 90% of us will go to a company's website before we'll call that company. So to me, that means anytime we're calling a company, it's an exception. It's a missed opportunity for a good customer experience. And how important is customer experience anyway? Well, Walker has identified that by 2020, customer experience will be more important than product or price. So it's key that we figure out how to re-innovate and digitally transform our businesses. Let's take Tesla, for instance. They've completely disrupted the auto ownership experience. And we know them all for electric vehicles, but did you know that they can do over-the-air updates, push things like ludicrous speed or autopilot after you've rolled the car out of the dealership? Secondly, they can do remote diagnostics and they can roll a mobile technician to your site to come do repairs and service. I would say it's these things, these long tail differentiators, that will, in the end, be the brand that people know about Tesla. And they're way ahead on the technology from their competition. That's why we're reimagining the customer experience, to bring that intelligent customer experience to all the companies that use Mitel solutions, because we want them to be able to transform their businesses as well. So we're combining Mitel's 45-year history of understanding how businesses communicate, both with Omnichannel Contact Center and the way that we do complex routing rules, and combining that with Google's Contact Center Cloud AI. The first is analytics. So we do a lot of Contact Center business. And the key thing that we typically do is focus Contact Center metrics internally. We help the business understand how efficient their agents are. You heard Darius say how expensive it is to run a contact center. That's why the metrics are focused on keeping those agents efficient. But I would say that with AI, we need to start to look outward. It's not so much more about how do you run efficient agents. It's about how do you take those exceptions when people are calling into your contact center and do something smart with it. So the ability to use Topic Modeler allows us to take a look at the information about why your customers are calling and help you improve your products and solutions. The second is virtual agent. If we all want to self-serve, then it makes sense that an always-on agent that can get us the answers that we're looking for would be very helpful. So with the virtual agent capability from Google, we'll be able to connect the customer directly to the knowledge base inside the organization. This allows us to help that customer get answers to their questions in real time with the most up-to-date information that's available to them. And then, of course, when we go to a live agent, we want to make sure that the customer's context of the conversation with the virtual agent is maintained. So we're going to pass that whole conversation to the live agent, make sure they understand the context, and then we're going to keep the AI in the conversation to help coach and do research for that agent in real time. Now, the same way that Google is democratizing AI, and bringing that to all of us as enterprises, Mitel wants to make sure that we can take the capabilities of the contact center AK, uh, components and bring them to all verticals, industries, and make sure that all size businesses can deploy this. So we've integrated it directly into our CloudLink platform. It's a cloud-born native microservice architecture that's global. 
that allows us to securely connect to the contact centers that our customers run, either hosted in cloud or in their on-site deployments. So let's talk about analytics for a second. We took a look at why our customers are calling us. So in the Mitel sales support queue, we ran more than 20,000 call records through the Topic Modeler engine. And we took analysis on what was coming in. We identified when we had a product launch, we actually had a migration licensing problem. And we found that through the signal here that you see on the green line on the graph that shows that we had upgrade in software as a high component for why people were calling in. Now, we were able to put a migration fix in place, and you can see that green line trend down rather rapidly after that was done. This is how we were able to improve our experience for our resellers and for our customers. Now, we're working with other companies to make sure that we validate this technology. We want to make sure that it's simple to deploy and easy to onboard. So, Ascendus Vacations, Ascendus Travel, is helping us to work through some of this. And as a matter of fact, Rodney Pattison is here with us today, the CTO of Ascendus. And the key things that he's excited about with using AI in his business is how to personalize the interactions for his customers, enhance support, extending his hours and making that interaction better, and then providing his advisors with a more effective means to be very good in that consultative vacation planning that they do. So without further ado, let's go to a demo. All right, so I'm on Ascendus' uh, vacation website here. And you'll notice that there's many categories on their website. They've got great information. Advisors that are experts in destination for this luxury vacation travel, destinations that I can choose from, experiences. They've even got a really good blog that's very rich with content. The problem is, as a customer, I'm not really sure where to start. I'm not sure what my vacation needs to be, so I want to talk to an advisor that can help me through this. So on their website, I see there's a number of different ways to contact them. I can come in through a voice call, I can email them, but in this case, I want to do a live chat. So I'm going to give them a little my information here. And while this is queuing up, I'm able to look at a little of the information on the website. Make sure our internet connection is working smoothly here today. All right. So now I'm greeted by Marisol, the Ascendus travel bot. And Marisol can help guide me through my preferences, experiences I'm looking for. So in this case, I'm interested in a family vacation. And I think, you know, based upon my kids' age, they like to go play at the beach. So maybe we'll go to Hawaii. Now, Marisol takes me through kind of an understanding of my preferences. And at that time, it's looking at what advisors in the back end are available that can help me with my consultative vacation planning. I think I'll just relax this time. All right. So at this point, Marisol is going to give me to an agent that can help me with this interaction. It turns out, Ahmed's the right person for me to talk to. So just like I mentioned, we passed the entire script of the bot interaction with the customer right to the agent. So as Ahmed, I can get the uh, understanding of the customer's context, where they want to go, who the customer is. And at this point, I can say, I'll help you with your Hawaiian vacation travels. Oops, if I can type. All right, so that we're staying in stream, right back and forth with the customer, same in the bot interaction. And now we'll see suggestions coming in. So I mentioned the AI stays in the conversation, and we start feeding the agent real information that's pertinent to that conversation. So the first article that comes up here is Hawaiian Islands Travel for Families, which is exactly what I had asked for. So now I can take a look at some of the Ascendus travel information. I can see that Maui is a good place for families that want to relax. Oahu is a good place for the classic Hawaii experience. I think Maui sounds good. Now, at the same time, 
as an agent, I can pass this information right to the customer so that they can look for themselves about that information and they can be guided as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this interaction and we're going to go into a voice interaction. Hello, thank you for calling Ascendas Vacations. I'm Marisol, the Ascendas Travel Bot. Please tell me what type of vacation you are looking for. I want to go to Europe. Do you know where you would like to go? No, but I'd like to talk to somebody that can give me some ideas. No problem. We have expert advisors that can help you find the perfect location. Are you interested in a guided tour? No, thanks. Okay, we would be delighted to help you plan your vacation. Please hold on while I pass you to one of our expert advisors who can help you plan a fantastic trip. So at this point the call comes through to the right agent that has expertise on European vacation traveling. And that agent is handed a transcript of the voice interaction between the bot and the human. And as we start getting into this conversation, we can actually expand to provide suggestions the same way that we did in chat. All right. So, Ascendus Vacations is excited about this opportunity. If we can go back to the presentation monitor. Thank you. They're really excited about being able to focus on improving matching accuracy for customers as they come to their website and want to find that uh, consultative vacation. They're also wanting to increase the success rate of first-time bookings and repeat bookings. Come see more down at our booth in Moscone West, 1323. Thank you. And at this point, I'll turn it over to Ofer. Hello. How many people here, if they could do a project in weeks, would prefer that over months? Just a show of hands. OK, yeah, and the rest of you maybe didn't hear the question. <laughs> so Chatbase can help with just that. Teams are building uh, virtual agents for contact centers, can now save a ton of time. <clears throat> so we've heard about how topic modeling can give you at a high level what uh, calls and live chats are about. Well, what we've done is we've gone and at a very specific use case level are able to map out the flows of those conversations. All that is made possible by leveraging Google's uh, machine learning that's been developed over many years. We're within Google. Um, and that, the same machine learning also powers Google Search um, parts of Google Search and, and, and Assistant and Gmail. So I'm excited to say that today we're announcing our early access program called Chatbase Enterprise Edition, which does just that. And, um, and if you step back uh, for the last couple of years, we've been doing optimization of, uh, optimization of virtual agents. Uh, and we've done that for hundreds of thousands of virtual agents processing billions of messages to virtual agents. And the new part that we're announcing today is to help you with insights for building these virtual agents. So normally, when a team wants to build a virtual agent for a contact center, they get experts from within the company into a room. Sometimes they bring in consultants. And they brainstorm, what should we build? They might brainstorm the flows. They might think about, how might people phrase this? And they might come up with maybe 10, 20, 50 variations. But if you use data, we've seen that you can get thousands of variations. And that makes your bots, your virtual agents smart. So really, there's like three uh, shortcomings to this brainstorm approach. One is that you don't predict all the nuances of the conversation, all the edge cases, 
where conversation might go. Two is that um, you miss trends in the contact center, whether it's seasonality, new products, or other things like that. It just is hard to keep up with that. And, and three, uh, third shortcoming is that it's like a slow process, very slow to flesh out everything. But really what it's all about is that it's a black box, what goes on in the contact center. How are people, or what are, they calling, what are people calling about? How do they phrase the question? Is not always clear. Sometimes they even say they don't even know what their problem is. You know, they're trying to figure it out. Um, what are good responses by agents is, always not very, is also not always clear. And so this is where chat base comes in. So we tag all the parts of the conversation. Actually, at the highest level, we tag what the conversation is about. This is a billing example. Someone's calling to change their bill due date. And so uh, we call it the driver. The highest level is billing. The intent level is change my bill due date, more specific. And then we go beyond that. You see the steps of that conversation. You know, uh, to what date do you want to change it to? And then you know, the customer provides the new date. So for each of these nodes, we extract thousands of variations. For example, this is real data. When someone provides a new date, you expect them to just give a date, right? But we've seen in the data people say, how about between the third and the fifth? Or um, the, the mid-month on a Friday. These are real examples. Most virtual agents will be like, I don't know what you, know, what you want from me. This is not, I wasn't trained for this. Um, but if you use the data-driven approach, you can really handle all these cases. So I'm going to talk about the three steps for building a data-driven virtual agents. It starts with discovering what's in your data, and then you deploy it to production, and then in production you optimize the experiences. And we're going to go into each one of these. So first step of the discovery phase is to find what are the high-level drivers that people are calling in about. So we use unsupervised machine learning, also known as clustering, to give you a sense for what are the key themes. And, uh, and you can see here that billing and accounts and returns are major drivers, but that tech support and payment are not as common. So let's go for a second into the billing and flesh that out, because it seems to be common. So within billing, you see we've clustered requests for changing bill due date, and that's a pretty big cluster. And then requests for charges on your bill or discounts to your bill are less common. Uh, at this stage, we use some supervised machine learning to clean up the grouping. But it's really the unsupervised that gives you a sense of where to look and what's important. Next step is to go deeper into change bill due date, because it seems to be a, a large intent within a large driver. And so the next step is to generate, and this can be done in a couple hours, something we've heard takes a week to four weeks. You can generate a detailed flow. Once that intent is triggered, change bill due date, uh, you can see all the, the ways those conversations go. So in this case, a common uh, flow is to verify the name, then what date, and confirming the new date. Each one of these nodes behind it has the thousands of ways that it was said. You know, and Google is one of the few companies that understand language. It's been our business for a long time. And so it's a good technology to apply to this problem. OK, so now we've, we have the building blocks for the virtual agent. And we've looked at it, we've verified that it looks good, and it's time to deploy. And so you deploy it to your virtual agent so that's out there in the wild being used by customers. And then, then you want to optimize. There's always going to be things that you missed, different things that didn't show up in the original data. And so this is where you have a chance to use the chat-based not-handled report. It shows you all the 
cases where the bot was like, I don't know what the customer is saying. And here we again use machine learning. Uh, so in the case of, let's say, my build timing won't work and get paid on second, so need a new due date, those weren't caught. But with supervised machine learning, we suggest the intent. So we tell you, this is what we believe this should map to. And with human review, you can accept the whole thing. If there's ones that you're not sure about, you can bring up the full transcript to confirm that it, you know, the context of it to make sure it's appropriate. After you've gone through this step, the final step is to check the funnel. Like, are people getting through this bill, change bill due date funnel? For, you know, for a specific intent, check, check the funnel. You can see there's a drop off, not everyone gets through it. And here again, you can bring up sample transcripts to see why are people dropping off. And this is, it could be a customer experience issue, and that will come up in the transcripts. So one large enterprise that we've done this analysis for shared that this way of building virtual agents is like moving at 200 miles per hour compared to their existing way, which is 10 to 20 miles per hour. So it's like going from a horse and carriage to a well-tuned race car. Anyone that's interested in learning more about this can come to the, can visit Chatbase and, and, uh, and uh, request a, a demo. You can also come by the contact center AI booth where I'll be. Thank you. <laughs> Next, Tracy will come. Yes, sir. Correct the intro. Thanks. Thanks, Ofer. So, uh, as Ofer said, um, contact centers are a bit of a black box. And, and the, the environment that we're in today, that's just not acceptable because our call centers have regulatory pressures on them. They cost us a ton of money. And ultimately, they're the channel to our customers. And the reputational risk that we have if we're not doing it right is, is just too, 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 too big not to be doing something about it. So KPMG has been working with a lot of customers to help them with their contact centers and the broader customer experience process. And while we've been doing a lot of topic modeling, we've been doing it more by our data scientists and our engineers using more customized, um, uh, tailored approaches. So when Google gave us the opportunity to test this new topics, topic modeling API, we were thrilled because we saw all the opportunity in the world to take it to our clients as a, a high accelerator to the work that we've been doing and bring a great amount of acceleration and efficiency to some of the projects that we could have done before and that we will do in the future. Um, topic modeling really is, um, as we look at it, is um, the foundation of all of the, the art of the possible that you can do in the contact center with artificial intelligence. And one of, one of our lead data scientists, Dr. Arthur Frankie, compares data to farming. So instead of data as the new oil, Data is the new soil. And topic modeling you can think of as a key seed that will help you grow your AI as you move into more AI-enabled contact centers. So if we take a look at, at a more end-to-end -end type of approach and one that, that, that starts with topic modeling as this foundational element, we look at topic modeling to drive out the topics that are telling us what is happening in these contact centers. What are people calling about? What are the trends? What are the spikes? What is the seasonality? And then we're applying insight to them. Because once you apply business insight, operational insight, over what's happening in the topic modeling, you start to learn more and more, not just about your contact centers, but about your overall organization. And those things drive a lot in, in terms of value. Um, we, we divide it into these two buckets. Let's improve agents, and let's improve our actual optimization. The optimization that happens from within the organization, the impacts that come from using artificial intelligence in your contact centers. So we'll, let's take a look quickly at um, what we're getting from the topic modeling itself. So you know, at its root, we're getting increased insights. We're understanding the intents and the compound intents that occur in these calls or in these chat logs in order for us to really understand what are the problems our customers are experiencing are we able to address those problems? And when we address those problems, are they satisfied? It also enables us to take that business oversight, overlay it, and understand trends in the information. So 
where are my spikes? Where are my issues? Where are my problems? Where's abnorm or abnormality? There we go. Where's abnormality in what's happening in my call centers? And can I correct for it? And on the benefit side, there's, there's really a number of different things that, that can drive out of this. So one of the areas is eradication. There's nothing better to improve a call center than to eradicate the conversation altogether. If you understand that your customers are having a specific problem that could be solved by updating your website, by pushing alerts or notifications to them, by making it more obvious or improved how they can answer that question using one of their mobile channels, and avoid the call or the chat into the, the, your customer contact center altogether, that's the best outcome. Your customer never had a problem, that's good customer experience and the cost doesn't exist anymore because it's already been solved. Um, and there's others as, as well. So you know, feeding into agent training, like, like Ofer talked about, in terms of being able to build more virtually driven agents and use the data to enhance it is, is imperative, as well as a number of other things. So um, as I mentioned, we were really thrilled to be given the opportunity to get our hands dirty uh, using the topic center, the, the topic modeling API. And um, what we did was we took 90,000 chat logs from our own IT um, uh, chat log from our, our own IT help desk. So the, the data itself was from, a, from the beginning of this year through about June. It had 90,000 uh, chat logs in it that involved about 67 agents and about 23,000 unique users. So it was a pretty, pretty, pretty significant size data set. And out of that data set, when we ran the topic modeling API over it, we came out with about 100 core topics that emerged from those, those chat log conversations that we then clustered down to about 50-ish. And as we did this, we began analyzing the output. What can we learn from this? And here's two examples of, of, of what we found. First is we looked at a month-over-month -month analysis. And when we did this, we found some interesting facts that our own help task didn't really have readily identified as um, specific issues that potentially could be resolved either A, by improving a process and therefore eradicating the need altogether, or using some more advanced methods like, like being able to apply dialog flow to use some, some more automated approaches to responses. The first was there was a spike in people requesting RSA token password resets. And the spike happened right around audit busy season. Well, that's because the auditors are in the office until busy season hits. And then once busy season hits, they're out at client sites. So they haven't used their RSA token in a month or two. They forget their password. They have to get it reset before they go back out to the client sites so that they can VPN in to the network. Well, for us, this is an opportunity to automatically do pre-notifications. Let's look at all of our auditors that haven't used their VPN in the past four weeks or six weeks, and let's push them a note with a link that says, if you need to reset your password, do it here. Eradicate the calls altogether. Another interesting piece of analysis that we did was we looked at the median um, agent chat word length compared to the length of the chat as well as the number of turns in each chat, so how much back and forth was occurring in each chat, along with the total volume of the chats that had occurred in each one of the topics. And we found a couple interesting things. So one of them was that if you look at software installation as a topic area and compare it against conference call information, you'll see that answering these chats took about the same amount of words. But look at how much longer it takes for the software installation questions to be answered properly. And the difference there is, for the software installation topics, the agent had to go and do some research. They had to go and get some information. They had to go and get the right type of response to give them. There were no templates. There was no ready information available for them to give to the customers. When we look at conference call, it was copy, paste, done. So same amount of words, but a lot, a, lot, a, a lot of increased length. So conference calls, that is an immediate, low-hanging fruit, ready for, for the application of Dialogflow to get automated. 
I don't need to be answering that with a human anymore. It's already templated, it's ready to go. On the software installation side, I'm looking at this saying, well, gee, if I had an agent assist that was saying, I heard them ask about their time and expense, here's the information they need to upgrade their time and expense. So opportunities for improvement were, were apparent right from the very beginning, even by just doing some very basic analysis. But where do we go from here? So in moving this forward, the, the real power of, of topic modeling, as I mentioned, is that topic modeling is that foundation. It's that seed that we can grow into something else. And by overlaying a lot of, of uh, the application of analytics over this, we're able to actually do some real steady state run operations in, in improving the way that we're serving our internal customers. So one of those ways is turning this into real monitoring. So if I have my topic modeling occurring over my customer channels on an ongoing basis, then I can monitor what's spiking. What's, what are the issues that are coming up? What are the issues that I put a process improvement in place for because it was a spike, and can I monitor that it's, a, that it's being eradicated, that it's dropping off? And one of the other areas is in active programs. So we all have a lot of change in our organizations. We're getting a new tool or a new technology or a new upgrade or a, a migrating to an operating system all the time. And these programs spike the need for customer service, the need for the addressment of questions and issues. And one of those areas that we recently had was we implemented a new T&E system. And we knew that there was going to be a spike of information, a spike of need for, for, for call answering um, when we, we were implementing this new system. But what they didn't readily know was what were the very specific issues people were having problems with? How can we improve the training for the next round of deployment to make sure that people don't have to call about those things? What are the bu active bugs in the system that are spiking that maybe just hadn't been contemplated in the initial implementation that we can, again, prepare to eradicate for in the next, the next round of deployment? And so some of the things that we found were um, uh, delegate access. Everyone was having, uh, there was a huge spike in people not being able to identify how to delegate to other individuals to handle their T&E. They were having trouble uploading their expenses, their expense, uh, expense receipts where those were required. They were also having uh, issues in the replication of their old profile to the new profile. So some of these, like delicate access, is better FAQs, better, better information available, better training for the next rollout, process improvement. Some of the others were issues with the technology that either needed improvement or had bugs in them that needed to be fixed. But we're able to monitor them now in a way that we know something real is happening and that it needs to be addressed. So uh, with that, um, please visit us right outside this door at the KPMG booth. We'd love to talk to you more about this. And I'm going to hand it over to Andrea from Genesis, who's going to take us to the next piece. Thank you very much, Chris. Hello, good morning. It's really a pleasure to be with you. Probably you noted that there wasn't my picture in the presentation for a very simple reason. You were probably expecting a, with Andrea, a nice Italian lady, the nice Italian lady, it's me. <laughs> Sorry about that. We start with the bad news. But let's start instead uh, with good news. So first, uh, I want to present very quickly my company. If somebody is not terribly familiar with Genesis, hopefully you saw our main stage demo. I want, and if you can broadcast, please, my, my phone. So Genesis uh, is a leading solution provider of customer experience platforms. We, have, we enjoy this leading, uh, the leading uh, role that is recognized by our analysts. So Forrester, we've been nominated 23 times in a row in the channel Magic Quadrant, and we have a similar um, appreciation by the analysts like Forrester and Ovum. But especially we enjoy uh, the trust of 11,000 customers in 100 countries. And we manage for them 25 billion of interaction per year. And those are meaningful interaction. Those are the interaction of the top. If you take the top 100 brands in the world, 65 of them are Genesis customers. 
So that's what we are. So I now remove my act as a sales person to become a technical sales. I want to show you a new channel that we want to leverage thanks to the partnership with Google. I want to show you an application that we built in combination with Google. Okay? Let's see on the screen. I want to talk with Genesis Kate. All right, getting the test version of Genesis Kate. Greetings, this is Kate. What can I help with? Search what should I do if I plan to travel internationally. To prevent an interruption in credit card access, it's necessary to set a travel alert on the credit cards you plan to use while traveling. You can set a travel alert using online banking by calling the number on the back of your card or by talking to G-Bank Automated Agent on your Google Home device. Perfect, what we just saw. This is a new channel. So I'm a customer of a bank, G-Bank. Actually, I'm the banker of G-Bank of Genesis. I don't have money, but I have the bank. But I was a customer that wanted to interact with its own bank. Imagine yourself for a second as a consumer. If you want to talk with your bank, your insurance, what do you do? Well, you go on the web, you search for a phone number. Most of the time when you dial, they have no clue who they, who they are. Or if you are re really good, if they are really good, they know thanks to the, your number that you're calling who you are. But they have no idea what is the intent of your call. In this particular case, I just ask a talk with Genesis Kate and boom. Magically, I could ask whatever question in a natural language integration. No uh, flow, no strict guided flow in, the, in the, those terrible IVR. That's pretty cool. Let's see something else. Hey, Google. Of course, there is the authentication. So it's asking to explore the tenderloin. It's not a good idea. Talk to Genesis Kate. Talk to Genesis Kate. Okay, let's get the test version of Genesis Kate. Greetings, this is Kate. What can I help with? What is exactly a travel alert? A travel alert allows the bank to allow transactions from a foreign country. This helps to avoid false fraud alerts. This is exactly what I need. Set it up. What country are you going to? I want to go to France. To provide better service, I'll just need to get your name and street address from Google. Is that okay? Yeah. Travel alert for France has been set. Now, do you understand what is happening? There we get to the confirmation that something has been happening. Do you understand why this is a new channel? This is a computer, completely new game. Immediately, I don't have to declare who I am. I can do the conversation, and when there is information that is critical, is privacy sense, immediately what happens? Google asks the permission to pass this information to the stack, to the, stack, the Genesis stack. So privacy is completely uh, granted to your customer, and at the same time, we are giving an incredible service. So, and of course, you noted probably also that we, you probably noted that we received an SMS. Of course, because it was an action that was kicked off, an action, a back office process that is set up the alert for the customer. In this particular case, do you see dear Alex, travel alert for France has been set. That's great, and that was Kate. Do you know that G-Bank offers insurance for trip abroad? That's fantastic. Just ask Kate to schedule a call back. Not difficult at all, right? So at this point, let's invoke one more time Kate. I want to talk with Genesis Kate. Okay, let's get the test version of Genesis Kate. Hello, this is Kate. What can I help with? Call me back. To provide better service, I'll just need to get your name and street address from Google. Is that okay? Yeah. 
calling you right away. Now I ask to come on the stage, my colleague Joseph Sufo, if you can put uh, on one screen the agent. I want to stress what happened one more time. We pass the information who the customer is. The, the platform, after the, to the grant has been given by Google, immediately we can call back the customer without asking a new question. Which phone? Where should I call you? That has been passed automatically thanks to the Google API. At this point, uh, the call will be served by an agent. So if we have uh, Joe on the screen, as soon as it's market ready, I will get the call back. And the dialogue, of course. I will put on the microphone, of course, because, as you know, Chromecast cuts. The person who requested the callback is on the line. Press 1 to speak to a customer service representative. If you need to keep connecting you to a customer service representative, just a moment. The call arrives. And now at this point, of course, let me off the, my microphone. Now the dialogue assistant that you saw on the screen can start. So I hope that you enjoyed, has enjoyed this presentation. This is definitely the new phase of the customer experience. Back to you, Darius. Thank you, Andrea, Offer, Tracy, and Josh. Appreciate it. And please, a round of applause for the sound and video crew. So, uh, so this clock tells me that I have zero minutes left. Uh, we'd be happy to take your questions, but we are getting kicked out of this room, so we will meet you outside. We'd be happy to chat with you. And with that, thanks so much, everyone. <laughs>